Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host, UK Kachidori. Hi guys, welcome to another very special episode. And with me is a dear friend, Kendra. Uh, Kendra has got an amazing story. While everyone seems to be struggling with what's going on around the world, she seemed to be figuring out how to create success for herself, for her clients, and for those that follows her. Kendra Hill, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I know you are in the midst of uh, organizing uh, your travel from Canada to US. So we truly appreciate you being on the show, sharing your nuggets and your lessons over the last few months. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Incredible. Now, somebody is wondering, who is Kendra? Uh, tell us about yourself and what you've been up to. Um. Well, as you said, you know, we're in a weird time and uh i found success in this time i feel like the world's worst year has been my best year <laughs> my absolute best year yeah. um so i started off as a consultant about 10 years ago doing brand management um i ran a firm for 6 years with 3 offices in america um it was fun <laughs> and then i got bored and i said you know i don't want to do this anymore and i had a little bit of a jaunt in the fashion industry um as a creative director and as a stylist and was really blessed there and then i just kept feeling this pull to come back into consulting like this is my purpose and this is where i'm supposed to be and um i did that and it, it's been listen amazing like amazing Absolutely amazing. One of the things that sort of made me want to talk to you is your story that uh, on the 5th of January this year, you launched a brand new company. And on the 24th of July, less than seven months later, you crossed over a major milestone of generating over a million dollars in revenue. How is that possible in this climate? (laughs) Listen, (laughs) nothing but the blood of Jesus, okay? (laughs) But seriously, um, thank you. Yeah, started my business uh, January 5th. Kendra Scale My Business is the name of the business. Um, It was kind of weird how it happened. I was traveling um, from Mexico. I was in Mexico working, traveling from Mexico to Canada, got to the airport in Toronto, and I was sitting in the airport uh, waiting for my car to come to drop me off at the Airbnb. And I literally heard God's voice say, start the business. And I was like, what business? I'm just here to see one client do one little thing. He said, start the business. And I saw again, Kendra scale my business. And I said, okay, fine, whatever. And I bought the domain, designed business cards. I mean, literally sitting in the airport in Toronto with my laptop on top of my luggage (laughs) and leaned in. I really leaned in. And by the end of that month, I had so many clients, I already made over a hundred thousand dollars. And yeah, it just, it started there. By the second month, I was like, okay, the first month was a fluke. You know, (laughs) February is going to be weird. February, again, over $100,000. So at the end of February, when I started seeing the numbers and the people and the work, and I said, you know what? I need to hire people to help me. So I started interviewing people. I I knew I needed an assistant because my calendar was crazy. And I knew I needed a junior consultant, someone that I could raise up, someone that I could teach, someone that I could train to do what I do the way that I do it. Um, And so I was fortunate enough to find someone actually in Barcelona who wanted to work for an American company. She was like really wanting to work for an American company. She had so much digital media experience. I was like, okay, I'll teach you how to be a consultant. And so I brought her on and I hired an assistant and just kept going. And then COVID hit in March. And I remember thinking, Lord, you told me to start this business. Yeah. Now you have the whole world shutting down. People are afraid. (laughs) Business owners are closing their doors. They're losing money. They're losing everything that they've built for years. But you told me to do this. So what are you going to do? It was a Monday when everything in Toronto started shutting down. And my main client in Toronto, I got her whole business online that day. I was like, okay, they're a, a mental therapy practice. So I got them online that day found, you know, people compliance software and just did everything I need to do that day to get them online. The next day, 
that client's colleague called me and said, can you create a crisis contingency plan for me? I said, sure. Did that in two days. That was new money. The <laughs> next day, <laughs> somebody else calls me and says, hey, I heard you did X, Y, Z for this person. Can you do this for me? Wow. Sure. Here's a contract. The next week, my main client was still at 80% of her revenue, which in her circle of entrepreneurial friends was like not happening. Like people were dropping like flies. No one was buying anything. They weren't selling anything. There, there were certain companies that couldn't sell anything. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, the mental health practice was, uh, they're technically essential workers, but they didn't go into the office. So how are you still making 80% of revenue? And she kept saying, it's Kendra. <laughs> Kendra is why I am making 80% of revenue. And so like to the next week, new client. Two weeks later, another new client. I mean, it just started like snowballing. Wow. And so it went from like, you know, doing well and being abundant at, you know, a little over a hundred thousand to like $200,000 months. Wow. Um, it was kind of crazy at that time. I was like, okay, God, what do you want from me? If this is what you're bringing to me, what do you want from me? He said, give out free information. Wow. And my team was like, give out free information. Like, yeah, we do freebies. Yeah. But Kendra, your freebies are like the how as well. You know, people say that freebies should just be the what and the why. That's and then you tell people the how. <laughs> well, I was giving away the how too. And God kept telling me, the more you pour out, the more I will give you. The more you give to these small business owners, the more I'm going to give you. So at the time, small business owners weren't even really on my radar. Most of my clients were corporations that were already seven figure. Um, some of them barely hitting seven. So like, you know, my job to help them really hit that seven those who were already 7 million, helping them to scale. So during that crisis, I felt, again, like that heart for small, small, small business owners. Like, what do you do if you run a flower shop and now you can't sell flowers? Or what do you do if you own a restaurant and Uber Eats isn't doing it for you? You know, how do you... So I started putting together this information. Wow. I put together a freebie um, with five other women. that I put together another freebie that literally gave you exact ideas per industry of what you could be doing. And people thought I was crazy. They were like, you are giving away all of this free information. Like no one's paying you for this. But literally I put out a freebie and then another corporation would call me. Hey, you know, we have a DEI issue. Can you come and handle this? And then, you know, a YouTuber comes and says, hey, you know, we have almost 10 million subscribers. We're looking at, you know, uh, readjusting and reorganizing our team. Can you come lead that effort? Absolutely, sure can. Yep, not <laughs> a problem, you know? And so that's that's really honestly how. It was like, I really felt God leading me every single step. And every month was something different. And every month was something new. And the numbers just kept climbing and kept growing. And one day in July, like, maybe like the first week of July. Oh yeah, because it was the first week of July because my uh, visa expired and I had to reapply for a visa. And um, my accountant calls me and she says, you need to stay in Canada as long as you can. And I said, why? She said, you're about to hit a million dollars. And I was like, like Canadian dollars? Because that's not, <laughs> you know, a Canadian million isn't the same. And she said, no, 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 in U.S. dollars. And she wow. said, whatever you're doing there, being isolated by yourself is working. And so this yeah. isolation period that so many of us have been facing was really like my incubation with God and God really being able to hear, uh, speak to me and for me to be able to hear him clearly. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I can hear you talk about hearing God, hearing God. For those maybe are listening, have no concept of hearing from God, uh, let's talk about that very briefly, how you go about it and how you get to hear from God and how you then move so fast like you have done to see these results. You know, I've been in church my whole life. <laughs> uh, I've been licensed in ministry since I was 15 years old. I preached my first sermon at 15. And um, I have learned over time that the best way to hear God is to be still and to be quiet. Right. What happens is in life, we're moving so fast. I mean, obviously, COVID has changed that, right? But normally, we are moving so fast. And we're worried about so much, and we're thinking about so much, and we're doing so much, and we're in the process and in the flow. We aren't able to hear something that is small and quiet. God talks to us in small, quiet voice. Like, it's a small, quiet voice. A lot of times, it's just your internal sense. But it's hard to tap into that when there's a lot of noise. And God is not going to compete with the noise of your life. Mm. He's going to cause you to get still, cause you to get quiet. So for me, I started learning that 
first of all, I have amazing dreams and my dreams are always so clear and I understand them. And sometimes God talks to us in our dreams because it's the only time we shut up. <laughs> and um, <laughs> once I learned like, okay, God, you're just going to keep speaking to me in dreams because I won't be quiet. Then I learned in my awake time, how do I get quiet? How do I get still? So I start my day every single day, no matter what. I lay in the bed, I open my eyes, and I sing worship music. And I sing worship and praise to God, and I get still, and I get quiet. And sometimes he'll have me go get a journal, because sometimes, you know, it's writing things out. It's writing out ideas, writing out thoughts, and then sometimes you feel or hear something come back to you. That's God. Write that down, you know? Mm -hmm. When you feel something, like, I sense something is coming, or I feel like I'm supposed to start doing this new product or this new service, that's God speaking to you. So it's just about getting still and really like listening for what you already feel inside of yourself. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Let's talk about what you do for your customers exactly. I know you've got corporate clients, but what do you actually do for them? Yeah, no problem. So my business is actually in two parts. Um, two parts because God directed me to do another part around May or June. <laughs> so uh, the main part um, has been, and it's funny because now it's starting to flip a little bit, but the main part has been corporate clients. So corporations who need organizational management, who need HR, who need um, diversity, equity, and inclusion training. So sometimes it's coming in and just saying, here's a way for you to fix your business, or here's a way to streamline your business. Here you go. And then for most people, they want implementation too. So I develop, you know, I discover all the issues, come up with a strategy, put that together and then actually implement that strategy. So for some of these corporations, I'm almost coming in like an external COO. Right. Um, for some of them, it's like external HR. Um, and then, like I said, there's one-offs. It's like leadership trainings or diversity trainings or things like that. Then the other side of my business is creators. So most, most of them are YouTubers. Um, and so for them, it's like, how do we move beyond YouTube? We've been doing YouTube for X amount of time. How do I move into traditional media like television or movies? Or how do I really maximize my, uh, my audience and my platforms, whether that's like TikTok or Instagram or um, whatever the case may be? How do we move into those spaces and expand? But what you find working with YouTubers is they need a lot of the same things corporations need. They need, they need systems. They need to be structured. They need streamlined so that they can be total creators and they know that that management side of things, knowing that the business is being managed is handled by, by me. Amazing. Amazing. So would you say any business owner here can, can have a journey like you had from zero to that point where you are right now? You know, would you say that's a possibility for business owners? Anything is possible if you believe. And that is so cliche, but it's the truth. Mm. I think that it's possible through a, a number of things. First of all, that faith aspect, anyone who is extremely successful is spiritual in some way. Now, your spirituality may be yoga. Your spirituality may be meditation, whatever it may be. My spirituality is the Lord. So knowing God for myself, right? That is my spirituality. That's my faith practice. You need a faith practice, first of all. You need to understand that something is bigger than you that is trying to nudge you and guide you and lead you on your journey. That's the first thing. The next thing a person needs to be that kind of, you know, successful is obedience. <laughs> you have to be obedient to that leading. You know, knowing that you're being led, you have to obey. You have to do what the leading is telling you to do. The next thing you need is discipline. Um, and sometimes, you know, discipline comes in different forms. Like I learned how to be disciplined through fasting and prayer. You know, if God says, don't, don't eat and drink for three days, we're not eating and drinking for three days. And I say, <laughs> we, my whole team, everyone is fasting. Like this is what we're doing. And so that discipline piece teaches you the fourth piece, which is hard work. Because if you can discipline yourself, you can work hard. You need those four components. You need faith, you need obedience, you need discipline, and then you need hard work. If you do those four things consistently over time, there is no way you can fail. <laughs> it's impossible for you to fail. <laughs> the problem right. is we get comfortable, right? Right. And so it's like, yeah, God, I heard you, but I'll move when I'm ready. Delayed obedience is disobedience. So you need to do what he says when he says. Then it's like, okay, yeah, but I'm not going to be so disciplined about my schedule. I'm not going to create so much structure. I'm going to kind of just float through things. Well, you've missed on the discipline. 
Then it comes down to the hard work. Are you willing to work 20 hours one day if that's what it takes? Are you willing to go and sit in someone's lecture to learn? Are you willing to submit yourself to learning more? Are you willing to, you know, bust your tail if your team isn't? Are you willing to bust your tail like you have a team if you don't? Amazing. You know, those four things are the things that, that really matter and that they make the difference. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And thank you for sharing that. You mentioned earlier on about mentorship. Uh, I think it was in our previous conversation. I think it's uh, most suitable at this point. Uh, talk to us about that whole concept of having a mentor in your life uh, to ensure you succeed in anything you do. Yeah, you know, if it were not for mentors, I probably would not be alive. When I was like eight years old, uh, my grandmother died. So when my grandmother died, my whole world started spiraling. I started facing all types of things, um, just from my own issues to, like, molestation. I mean, just all types of things I started dealing with when I was eight years old. And at that age, a woman who was a co-pastor of a church um, that I started going to, she just took me under her wing. Oh. And if it were not for her starting at that point— I definitely wouldn't even be like alive. There's no way. She literally, she taught me everything about being a woman and being proud and being gracious mm -hmm. and um, being charming and learning how to use it, use your charm for good and not for evil, not being manipulative, but learning really how to be a woman. So she kind of carried me through my grade school journey until I graduated high school. And then I had a mentor who came in there. So I wanted to really work in entertainment and politics and all types of things. I was into all types of different things. And so there was a woman who um, worked as a, an attorney doing like some lobbying work. And she kind of took me under her wing for a few years. And she was a lot like the woman from before, honestly, character-wise. It was really <laughs> interesting. She was really tough, but she taught me so many things and she helped to shape and mold me. And then I moved into, like, uh, there was a period of time where I was, like, producing Christian television. And I had the best mentor, who to this day is my life mentor. Um, he was actually the person who was the ministry director for Bishop T.D. Jakes. Before Bishop T.D. Jakes became Bishop T.D. Jakes, when they were in West Virginia, he moved the ministry from West Virginia to Dallas, Texas. And... Um, that man taught me so much. And to this day, I mean, literally, I called him the other day and I said, hey, I have a leadership training I need to do. You know, my focus is being a people-centric leader. Here are my points. What do you think? And he said, yeah, that's great. But here are some additional things. Tell them about this and tell them about that. And so his life's experience over 20 years at the Potter's House with Bishop Gates and building that and then producing television for so many other, you know, Christian celebrities and televangelists or what have you taught me so much. And we just sit and we will talk. We will have like life lessons. I called him a couple of weeks ago and I was cooking, you know, Sunday soul food dinner. And he was just telling me about what was going on in his life, but I was gleaning and learning so much. It wasn't, it's not like he comes to the conversations like step one, two, three, he just talks and being able to submit yourself under the wisdom of somebody else. It doesn't matter about age. It's not about age. I mean, granted, of course, like this person is older, but it's not about age. It's about submitting yourself to wisdom. Will you sit under someone whose life has been more than yours, who has done more than you have done, but who is willing to pour into you and teach you what you need to learn in order to get to your next step? And so throughout my life, I can look back and I'm like, wow, from Lamel to Sherry to Silas, all of these people who I looked up to at that time, they were there for that period for a reason. And they taught me everything I know to be successful and to be who I am today. So I think mentorship is so important because you don't have enough time in your life to learn all of the lessons that someone else has already learned. You don't have enough. There's not enough breath. There's not enough time for you to actually attain all of the wisdom that you need, all of the tools that you, it's impossible. So you might as well glean from other people, pick up pieces here and there and create your own artillery versus trying to push yourself into learning everything that you can't learn. Outstanding. Outstanding. You are a man of, uh, a woman of faith. You know, how do you go about choosing 
uh, the right mentor for you because there's so many voices out there say I can teach you how to be online I can teach you this but how do you go about choosing the right one for you to be honest I've never paid for mentorship I have never sought a mentor wow mentors have come to me and not in the sense of hey Kendra I want to take you under my wing the relationship just develops organically you meet a person, whether that's somebody you work with or, you know, a client that you're working with or somebody that you just, you know, meet at a coffee shop or what have you. Allow that relationship to organically grow. Um, when I started working with Silas, um, like I said, I was producing Christian television. He was the ministry director for the person I was producing television for. So we had a working relationship. He was my boss. He's the person I reported to when we were working on, you know, production for this show. About a year later, I realized we were talking all the time. And he was always having something amazing to say. And one day I finally just told him, you're my mentor. I just told him, I said, you're my mentor. You are the person I'm going to glean from. He said, okay. He said, as long as it ain't nothing, you know, too heavy on me, sure. So I don't, you know, bombard him every day. We talk really every three or four months sometimes. You know, sometimes we go six months without really speaking. But then we talk. So I think that finding... Finding the mentor is not the goal. The goal is to surround yourself with people who know what they're doing, know what they're talking about, and allow those relationships to grow organically. I have a couple of people I have mentored myself. They don't pay me to mentor them. They didn't seek me out. They didn't say, hey, will you be my mentor? There are people that I started paying attention to. I saw what they were doing. I saw areas where they could improve. I started giving them information for free. And then the relationship just started to develop. And so there's, there's also a thing about being a good mentee, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so I have like a freebie on my website about that, about being a good mentee. Like, how do you give back to your mentor if you're not paying them? You give back by, you know, when you schedule a call, you show up on time. You have questions. You're ready to, you know, be quiet and listen. Or sometimes they have projects. Sometimes mentors have projects. I have a mentee who helped me. I had a deadline and I was really struggling. <laughs> I said, hey, can you just like type these scriptures out, like copy and paste them from a place and put them in one doc for me? She said, absolutely. She stayed up till two o'clock in the morning to do it for me. But I've given her so much, you know? Um, so finding that mentor, it's, it's an organic process. Wow. You know, you just remind me of the statement. I don't know where I got it from, that when a student is ready, a teacher will appear. You know, it's just uh, figuring out where you are and when you are ready to receive the right information or a certain information, somebody who has that information will be just around the corner. All you have to do is being open to it and uh, being able to see what you have around you and get started from there. It yeah, really is humility. Amazing. Humility. 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 humility is the one. Being humble. Being humble enough to know that, like, this is around me and I can learn something here. It's not, it's not me knowing everything. It's being humble enough to say like, okay, there is something great right here and I can learn. So let me chill out <laughs> and be humble and see where this goes. You know, I'm so grateful for this show that I have to, today. It has taught me that everyone is my teacher. If I can only learn to figure out what is it that I need to learn at this moment, that I become even better as I go. It's truly yeah. amazing. Kendra, as we are coming toward the end of our time here together, I know a lot of business owners right now are in a fear, panic mood as to what is going on with the world. Uh, are we going to go back to normal, you know, pre-COVID? Uh, and a whole lot of things happening in the world today. As a fellow business owner uh, who is doing very well, helping others and mentoring others, what would you say maybe two things that you would leave the business owners with today? Two things or so many things. I no. think honestly, like the biggest thing, yes, the biggest thing is tapping into that spiritual piece, tap into faith, tap into something that is bigger than you and learn to lean in and listen to it. I think the next thing really is, Go with the flow. Go with the flow. You know, uh, one of the things my mentor says all the time is go with the flow till God says no. And so even for me, like, yes, the business is successful, but I'm not 
depressed. I'm not concerned. I'm not fearful. And it's not about being successful. Even if I, even if I weren't doing so well, I have learned to really trust God and just to trust the process. I had a, a client um, contract that ended on Tuesday. I was kind of worried because it was like a corporate client, like a big client. I was like, okay, well, it's coming to an end. I've been dealing with them for a while now. I've really done everything I can do. They're in a good place. I put the right people in place in their organization. Like they needed a COO. I hired a COO. They needed a general manager. I hired a, you know, I did all the things I needed to do to really set them up to be where they needed to be. I was like, man, okay, well, I guess I should start looking for, you know, another client. That day I had a discovery call with someone who heard of me, had never met me, never seen me, never anything. And she's a pretty big influencer. She said, yeah, so-and-so mentioned your name to me, which is crazy because I've, I've reached out to so-and-so and they were like, I've never said your name to this person. <laughs> so it's how God works, you know? She said, so-and-so mentioned your name to me and I know you are the person to help me. If I can't do it this time with you, it will never be done. And so in that moment, I was like, here I am, a little bit anxious, like, oh, I'm, okay, I'm getting rid of one client. I'm offboarding one. What am I going to do to fill this void? I need to fill this void and keep my months where they are. And God sent me what I needed. And so it's like, go with the flow. Do what you're supposed to do. Go with the flow of things and trust the process. We very well may go into a second wave. We may not have a vaccine until next fall. You know, we may, whatever. The world may never go back to quote unquote normal. Are you going to, as a business owner, stand still in fear or are you going to step forth in faith? And that's really, that's the question. Will you stand still in fear and let whatever's going to happen around you happen and destroy you? Or will you step out on faith, just trust the flow and God's timing for your business and for your life? And so those are, those are my, my two things. Amazing. Amazing. Going with the flow, gosh. You know, I was uh, having another guest here who mentioned exactly the same thing and mentioned that if you look at nature, nature follows the path of least resistant. And he gave an example that if you pour water, it will find an easy way uh, of getting around the boulders. It goes with the flow. And uh, it's only us humans that want to go against the grain, so to speak. But the reality is, there isn't much that we need that is up the hill. But if we go with the flow, we'll be amazed at where we'll be led. And I love that. For sure. I mean, I went with the flow. That's why I'm still in Canada. You know, I came to Canada in January. My plan was to go back to the States by April. But that wasn't God's plan. And in this time, I mean, like, my business has grown so much. Not just in Toronto. I mean, worldwide. I have a client in Bangkok, a client in Morocco, a client in Mexico. Like, it's happening, you know, of course, clients in the States, but like it's happening because I'm not resisting. I'm not fighting. And then when I knew it was time to go home, literally, I mean, I, I think I, I think I fasted for three days. The very next day I woke up, I was making breakfast. I was so excited. I could finally eat something. And I heard it's time. It's time. I was like, time for what? And the next thing I know, I don't even know how I got from making breakfast to sitting down Googling flights, but I was. I mean, it was like the craziest thing, but it was, a, it's a flow. I don't, I'm not fighting the fact that I had to be here isolated by myself for nine months. You know, I'm not fighting the fact that like, it's time to go back to the States. Like, even though a lot of people are fearful because it's, you know, the numbers and how crazy it is there. But like, I know God's going to protect me because he told me to go. Awesome. And there's a flow there. So. Awesome. For those who wants to carry on lending with you or become your clients, where can they find you, Kendra? They can find me at KendraScaleMyBusiness.com. You can also find me on Instagram at I am Kendra Y Hill. Awesome. And Kendra is an amazing uh, YouTuber. I love uh, what you <laughs> do there. And uh, notice also you've got a, a lot of uh, subscribers. So if you want to learn more of how to do that, Kendra is your girl. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. There you have it, guys. I hope you have taken some notes just like I have here and uh, you'll be able to apply one or two things you've learned today. If you've got any question, visit Kendra's site or just uh, hook us up on LinkedIn and we'll be able to support you 
along the way. Thank you for listening to Ukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.ukibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. 